Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a long sleeve turtleneck dress. Start by lining up all of your seams and smooth out all the wrinkles, and then using a washable marker and a piece of kite string, mark out your pattern. And notice that I'm starting at the underarm. Now you want to pleat along this line, making it as straight as possible. And I like to start in the middle line, it's out a little ways from the center and it just makes your pleats not quite as tall towards the back end. Um, this is just a way I like to do it, but you could, you could pick any one of those lines and start. I ordered this dress off of Amazon and it's really nice. I'll put a link for it down below in the description box so it'll make it easy for you to find. It's 96% rayon and 4% spandex and it's really soft and it has sort of a, like a clingy feel so it's going to be tight on the body but then the skirt part of it sort of flares out. Um, I used to wear these all the time in the 90s and I called them baby doll dresses. I just absolutely love this thing, it's really cute. So we've got that first line all pleated up, so now it's time to secure it. And for this project, I'm going to use rubber bands, but you could also use kite string or nylon string. It's whichever you prefer. I like rubber bands because they're quick and easy. And these little baby hair ties, they work great because they're nice and tight, but they don't tighten it down so much that the pleats begin to buckle. So I, I do really like these baby rubber bands and I got those at Walmart in the hair area. Now for the rest of it, just continue to work on your pleats and securing it with rubber bands. I have found that ice dyeing is pretty forgiving, so your pleats can be a little bit wonky and you still achieve great results. But if you really want to have that nice fan fold where you see a line all the way from start to finish, you want to work pretty diligently on making sure that your pleats are all really nice. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking time. I'm not trying to introduce a whole bunch of extra pleats in. I'm just trying to make the pleat from start to finish one long big pleat so you may notice that they started out maybe being about a half an inch tall and now they're probably an inch an inch and a half tall and that's what happens on a good side fan fold so this area here it's starting to get pretty thick you've got the entire bottom of this dress part up against the turtleneck area and the shoulders are coming into it. So that's a lot of fabric all mashed up in there. Just try to work it out, creating nice pleats. And then this project is getting super long and I want it to fit into my gutter. So I'm just gonna take the, the sleeves here and wrap them around and rubber band them down.
Next, I'm going to place my dress down inside of the gutter and I picked the gutter up at Lowe's and I think it's 10 feet long and then I just cut it down into manageable size pieces. And I got the idea from watching Fun Endeavors, Angie. She um, was the first person that I saw doing it and it's genius. So I don't know if she came up with it by herself or she saw somebody else doing it, but I use this method all the time. For this dress, I wanted to choose colors that I don't normally use together, but are also good for this time of year. So a little bit dark, and then the purple, well, most of us girls like purple a lot. So, you know, I wanted it to be dark, but also really pretty. And I think that uh, you're gonna like the results on this one. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of you that watch on a really regular basis. You're keeping my views up, which is helping YouTube see the channel as valuable. So I really appreciate that. And also we made it to the 10,000 subscriber mark and in YouTube, that's a big first milestone. So I'm really proud of myself and I want to say thank you to all of you guys that have helped make it possible for me. Um, I really greatly appreciate you guys. You leave me comments and feedback and I feel like we're in this together. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now grab a mask and give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. It's a lot easier if you start putting your ice on your project before you put it in your tote and elevate it. I don't know what I was thinking. But what I did is I took one of my dye cloths and I put it down at the bottom of the gutter and this is just going to help make like a reservoir to catch some of that ice because the ice inevitably wants to roll downhill. Gosh, look at those colors guys. Aren't they beautiful? So anyways, back to the cloth. You know, after a couple of hours, the ice melts down and it sticks together and it becomes one. I pull the dye cloth away because I don't want it to, you know, catch all the dye right there and create muck. I, I want the dye to be able to run freely down and out of the gutter. Next, you want to let it batch for 24 to 48 hours after the ice melts. I came back and checked the project the next morning and it had a lot of dye saturation on the back. However, there was still a lot of undissolved dye on the top. So I hit it with another round of ice and then I let the ice melt and then I batched it for 48 hours. Um, it's getting a lot cooler now. So I wanted to make sure that this dress had every chance to be the most vibrant that it could be. For the rinse out process, you want to start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. Now from here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle. 
I do a second hot water cycle using Carillon, which is a textile detergent that I get from Dharma. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And I also get that from Dharma and I have links for them down below in the description box to make it easy for you to find. And then I put it in the dryer and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our turtleneck dress after it's been washed and dried. I love this color combination. These are colors I don't normally put together and I'm really enjoying it. The pattern sort of reminds me of a sea anemone. And that's what I see. So I, I like the colors. I like the way that the deep space, it kind of lightened up into this really soft navy blue. It's beautiful. And the gunmetal gray, and I think it's the imperial purple, it could be the deep purple, but it sort of broke off into this reddish color, and I certainly wasn't expecting that. The silver lining, I think it gets lost quite a bit because the other colors are really dark. But overall, I love the color combination, and the close-up pictures show how beautiful it really is. So I'm happy, and I definitely recommend this dress. It took the dye very well. So what do you guys think of this dress? please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and then click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.